Hey everyone, it's Julie Mark here from RV Love and you may have seen our recent video about our infamous death wobble experience. Okay, so he's really wrong. That feels really wrong. Something's really wrong. Doing our vehicle behind our motorhome. Uh, we've had some follow-up solutions we've put in place to help prevent that happening again and that's what we're going to talk about in this video, so stay tuned. Welcome back everybody, Julia Mark again here from RV Love and yes, the death wobble. We got a lot of comments on that video and it seemed there were a couple of things that we didn't explain very clearly so we're just going to recap on that quickly now in case you had questions about that too. I thought we covered it clearly but based on the questions maybe we didn't. Yeah, we had a lot of people who were <laughs> suggesting a different way of charging our batteries assuming that we did not have something to charging our batteries but we mm -hmm. actually do. When we installed our braking system it's an Invisibrake system from Roadmaster. It has a trickle charging ability for the tow vehicle. Unfortunately, this type of Jeep, Jeep Cherokee, has a very high draw on the battery when it's being towed because some additional accessories that are installed to keep the steering active to avoid the death wobble. So coupled that with the fact that our Jeep battery was five years old and in need of replacing and the stop and go traffic up in the northeast is what killed that battery really fast to the point where it was just time to replace the battery. Yeah, yeah. It was just way too much draw. Those conditions caused way too much draw for what the charging capacity we had on board at the time. So we knew we were going to be making fast tracks and long days driving from Maine to Oregon so I waited to replace the battery until we got to Oregon because I was afraid that the battery may get drained again and need another replacement battery after that trip. So we bought a new battery one up in Oregon and then we planned our visit down here to Roadmaster. So we're now here at the Roadmaster headquarters in Vancouver, Washington for three reasons. One is to get them to check our equipment, especially since we had this death wobble experience, take a look at the Jeep and to see if there's anything we can do to add an additional charging system. We're going to see if it's something we can do to supplement the Invisibrate charging. Two was to get our towing equipment checked because it has been almost two years actually since we had this setup installed and even though Mark keeps an eye on it and cleans it, you'd notice that it was getting pretty loose, right? Yeah, the tow bar was starting to feel pretty loose when I was operating, setting it up and hooking it up and taking it apart. And also it's been a couple years since we had the Invisibrake installed and there may be some upgrades to the Invisibrake as well. And we had a communication error between the transponder in the motorhome and the transponder in the Jeep. We wanted to have them have a look at that here at Roadmaster as well. So when we got here and started talking to the service advisors here at Roadmaster, I was really excited to see that it'd be very easy to install additional charging line on top of what the normal charging through the Invisibrake system. It was a simple install of a relay and a new charge line from the center pin of the plug-in. So now I have a lot of extra power. Additional benefit of that is normally the Invisibrake to charge the battery needs to have the lights on in the motorhome. Mm -hmm. But with this new wire, I no longer have to have the lights on to get charging capacity into the Jeep. And that's a common issue with these particular Jeeps as I understand it. Yeah, I mean the, the charging capacity of the Invisibrake system is enough for most vehicles to not need additional charging. But this Jeep with the aftermarket install for the, to keep the steering active to avoid death wobble, drains the battery too fast. So we need additional charging line and that's what we've installed today. And they have assured us that we are not going to have that happen again. So with a brand new battery and that additional charging line into the Jeep, we're both feeling really confident that that isn't going to happen again because as we said, we already had the aftermarket install to prevent it happening. It was the fact the battery that was dead that meant it wasn't active to prevent it. So yeah. we're all good now. And next we had them service our tow bar because it was feeling really loose mm -hmm. and I even though I knew it was loose I didn't realize just how far out of normal it was until we had it serviced here and they completely disassembled it put it back together with all new washers mm -hmm. and it's really tight and stiff and you know mm -hmm. now it feels like it's brand new now so that's really great 
Yeah, and that's something that, you know, there's not a particular time frame or number of miles that determines how often you need to do that. Uh, we've traveled, how many miles have we done with that? We've probably, probably done at least 15,000 miles with it. Yeah, probably at least 15,000. So, but traveling... Roadmaster does offer the servicing of these tow equipment at a lot of rallies and a lot mm -hmm. of big events, or if you happen to be coming through here, there's for a nominal fee, you can check that here, the inspection fee. Or, of course, the dealer where you have your towing mm -hmm. system installed is a great place to have that done as well. So that was good to have that done. And yes. finally... And the last thing is our transponder that wasn't communicating properly between the two vehicles. And part of that is that we had this installed a couple years ago when this was brand new. Mm -hmm. And there's been a couple software updates since then. And mm -hmm. so when we were here, we were able to make some software upgrades to the actual Invisibrake system itself and the transponder in the Jeep. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually couldn't find it before, but I was able to relocate that underneath the dash to an area where I can more easily locate it so that I could push the two buttons to re-sync them. Because so you have to re-sync them by pressing the button simultaneously. And those instructions are available on the Roadmaster website. And we're going to put a link to a blog post that goes with this down below with just a little bit more detail and links. So go to rvlove.com and you'll find the related blog post. We'll put the link down in the description. It is worth mentioning that we towed our Jeep more than 3,000 miles after the death wobble occurred without recurrence despite the battery being dead for at least part of the drive almost every day. Also worth mentioning that we towed our Jeep more than 1,500 miles driving from Oregon to Colorado when we first bought the Jeep before installing the aftermarket part that prevents the death wobble as we were not in an area long enough to get it installed at a dealership. Very specific conditions must be met to set off the wobble. From our understanding, the aftermarket installation is recommended on all 2014 to 2018 Jeep Cherokees before towing. We have heard that the 2019 models no longer require it, but check with Jeep representatives or forums for updates. The fix recommended by Jeep for our model year involves installing of additional wiring harness to keep the steering active while the ignition is turned off. This puts significant drain on the battery and can kill the battery in as little as three hours without a charging source. Our Invisibrake braking system does provide charging to the battery and it is enough for most vehicles. In fact, we towed our Jeep nearly 20,000 miles without experiencing the death wobble and only once arriving with a dead battery, just using the charging capacity from the Invisibrake. However, we still recommend a secondary charging source in order to fully overcome the wiring harness drain, especially when driving in a lot of stop and go traffic. This will ensure a longer life for your battery and a reduced odds of ever experiencing the death wobble in your towed vehicle. So if you're new here to our channel, you may not be aware that we haven't always towed four down. We did start out towing with a tow dolly behind our first motorhome, and that was with a Mini Cooper convertible because that was just a fun, sporty car to explore the country with. We chose to tow that on a dolly, which was a great solution for us for the first three years. And then after about three years, Mark's like, yeah, I think I'm ready for a four down. And that coincided with when we decided to change to the Jeep, change to a four down solution. So both of those towing solutions were right for us and our choice of vehicle at that stage of our RV life and our RV traveling experience and preference. So we've got some articles and videos that can help you decide which one is for you. So going a little bit off on a tangent here, but while we're talking about towing, some of you may not be aware of those articles and videos. So we just wanted to let you know that they're there and uh, check them out. We'll put the links down below. So it's been a really productive visit. Time to hit the road. We're heading down south. We've got more videos coming up and we're putting lots and lots of articles and camp camera reviews and all kinds of other content over at the website rvlove.com. So come on over and check us out there. And I think that's about it. I think that's it. Time to hit the road. So thanks for watching guys. If you've got any questions, leave them down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And until next time, we'll see, see you on, on the road. road.